Hey guys, it's Jazara. After weeks of controversy and two World Championship Cups getting shut down or having the majority of their players pull out, thanks to the help of LUD, we were able to get an amazing event going over this past weekend, Scuffed World Tour. This event included many of the best players in the world, including the best player from the United States, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Spain, Japan, France, the Dominican Republic, and Australia in attendance along with many other highly ranked American, Japanese, and Mexican players. I have so much respect for everybody who traveled out to this event. It takes a lot to travel, not only across the country, across the whole world, to show up and play your favorite game at a high level. So much respect to everybody who came out to this event. Since the event had limited entrance, I'll be able to go over every player in attendance, starting from the 13th place finishers all the way up to first. The bottom four players were actually the four projected to place there. Starting off with Australia's best player, Jay Dizzle. Earning himself a spot by being the highest placing Oceania player during this season, Jay Dizzle is one of the best young links in the world, with wins over players like Leon, Zenyu, Fatality, and others across his trips. Unfortunately at this event, he came out empty handed, getting 3 0'd by Akala and Sonics, two top 10 level players. He did have strong showings in some games, but his run ended at just 13th this weekend. Next is Brazil's number one player, Ferps. Ferps came out of nowhere post quarantine and honestly put Kazia on the map. With his innovative Ferps tech, he gained some height from American players and got voted into the Invitational, showing off what he could really do. He only picked up one set win, but was able to take Akala and Kola to game five at that event. At this tournament, he had to face off against the best player in the world and the best player in Europe back to back. He went down to game 5 with MK Leo, once again showing he could bring it close but isn't quite there yet. Versus Gluto, he had some close games, but the set only went to 4. Siski is Spain's number 1 player and was ranked as the number 2 player in Europe last season. The Dark Samus has many strong runs at majors in the past, like 9th place at Genesis 8 and 5th at Colossus 2022. He faced off against the eventual champion Spargo for the first time in round 1 winners, where Siski fell 3-1. He then had to go up against Onan, who he was 0-1 with coming into this event. Siski fought hard, but the Steve was a bit too much for him to overcome and fell 3-1. The final 13th place finisher was Meister. Like I said, somebody had to go 0-2. Meister has been the consensus best Game & Watch player since the game came out. Though with Mia's rise, that might not be true anymore. He lost to Tweak in Winners, who was getting his revenge from LSI in a Game 5 set. In Losers, Meister had to face off against his recent bracket demon, DeBuzz. While they haven't played since Momocon this year, DeBuzz has won their last 4 offline sets. Meister stuck the solo game and watched against DeBuzz's Rosalina and fell 3-0 to the King in New York. For our 9th place finishers, we start with Mia, who made his second American debut at this event. After a massive run to first place at Apex 2022, Mia immediately caused an upset, beating the six seeded Onan in a matchup he's very familiar in, having played Akola many times. He lost the game 5 set to the eventual champion Spargo in winner's quarters, even making him switch off of his cloud to Aegis. After that, he went up against Gluttony, losing to the top Wario 3 2. Sonics was seen by a lot of people as a potential sleeper pick to make a big run at this tournament, but his winner's bracket dreams were ended quickly in round 1 against Shuton, where he lost 3-1 to to the Aegis. Aegis has seemed to be a weak point for Sonics, notably getting counterpicked Aegis by MKLeo and Spargo at the Ludwig Smash Invitational. In losers, he convincingly 3-0'd Jay Dizzle, then faced off against Light. Sonics looked very dominant, controlling the pace over the first two games. But Light was able to get the reverse 3-0 and ended Sonic's run at 9th place. DeBuzz is one of North America's strongest competitors and one of Ultimate's most prolific tri-mains. He's kept up with his dry streak at Invitational Top 8s this year, getting another 9th here. Losing to Light's Fox, making it his 5th loss in a row to him, then beat Meister in round 1 of losers who he's continued to have a dominant record against. He was eliminated by the surprise of the event, shoots on 3-0 in losers. This actually marks the first time that the two of them have played in Smash Ultimate. Our last 9th place finisher is Riddles, who's been on an absolute tear this year. After a big underperformance at main stage, Riddles came in looking very strong. Defeating Gluto 3-1 in round 1, he faced off against MKLeo next. 
I'll get into what happened in that set a little later on, but just know that Riddles lost a very close game 5 to MKLeo. In losers, he had to face off against Onan, someone who Riddles has been historically close with. This time though, he wasn't able to get the best of the Midwest Finest and had his run finished up at 9th place. Despite all the haters the young competitor may have, Onan is undoubtedly one of the best players in North America. With such a stacked resume this season, Onan got the 6th seed coming into this event. He faced off against possibly the person he wanted to face the least, Mia, round 1, who's an expert in the matchup having played Akala many times. After hitting the loser's bracket, Onan beat Siski and Riddles, both in a convincing 3-1. He had his run finished by Light at the very end, who was on fire and beat him 3-0. Europe's best player, Gluto, made his way back to the US for his third Invitational Tournament in a row out here. He had a tough bracket having to face off against a bracket demon of his, Riddles, who he fell 3-1 to in round 1. To bounce back from losing to Riddles' Kazuya, he defeated Ferps' Kazuya 3-1 in losers round 1, then had to go up against Mia, a top 5 Japanese player. Glutini has a negative record to Meister at Majors, but was able to conquer the top Game & Watch in an exciting Game 5 set. His run got ended in the next round to Shutan's Olimar 3-0. After looking rocky his first set against Ferps' Kazuya, he had to double down and go up against one of the other top Kazuya players, Riddles. MKLeo went down 0-2 with his Byleth, but then did the unthinkable. He busted out the Marth, and the Marth looks so good. Leo broke out to the general public in Smash 4 when he won Zero Saga with his Marth, so seeing him go back to his roots is always awesome. He was able to bring it all the way back and locked in the reverse 3-0 and a spot into top 8. His next two sets weren't as impressive. He lost 3-0 to Tweaks Diddy in winter semis, then to Shutan's Olimar 3-0 in losers quarters, sending the champion home early. Light was consistently the US's strongest competitor in 2022 and finished off the season strong with a 5th place here. He solidly defeated DeBuzz 3-0 in winners round 1, but then fell the next round at Tweak Sephiroth 3-1 in the winners top 8 qualifier. He matched up against Sonics to make top 8 loser side. After going down 0-2, he fought back and went into Ultra Instinct the next 3 games and got the win. In the first round of top 8, he faced off against the number 2 Steve player, Onan, who he had previously traded sets with. Light broke down the Steve and took the set 3-0. The next set against the number 1 Steve, Akula, didn't go as well as the last. It started out close, but as the games went on, Akula began to pick up on Light, countering his aggressive gameplay. Light ended up losing the set 3-1, finishing the year off with a strong 5th place. Japan's best player, Akula, came out of nowhere in 2022 and is in contention for number one in the world this season. His fourth place finishing here ties his Summit 5 placing as his lowest placing American tournament and only the fourth time in his ultimate career not placing first or second at a tournament he's entered. His run started off beating Jay Dizzle in a convincing 3-0 round one, then facing off against one of the other top Japanese players at the event, Shuton. Akala was able to beat the Olimar and Aegis player with a comeback in game five. In winter semis, he had to play Spargo, it was a hard fought set from both players, but Spargo ended up winning in a last dot game 5. After beating Light in losers, he had the rematch against Shuton in losers semifinals. This time, Shuton turned the tables and won the set game 5 with Aegis, ending Akala's year at 4th place. A very strong end for the young Steve Main's first ranked season. Shuton was the biggest surprise of the tournament, and a player I'm personally very high on. This was most likely the strongest run of the Aegis and Olimar co-main's ultimate career, showing his mastery of both characters. In round 1, he defeated Sonic's 3-1 with Aegis, then lost a very close game 5 set to Akala using Olimar and Aegis. In losers, Shutan got even more locked in, and went on an amazing run, starting with the buzzes Rosalina and Min Min, who he defeated 3-0 with Aegis to make it into top 8. Round 1 of top 8, he 3-0'd Glutini with Olimar, shutting down Europe's best in a swift set. After that, he 3-0'd MKLeo's Byleth and Marth convincingly with his Olimar, ending the best player in the world's run. He matched up against Akula next, who knocked him into the loser's bracket. This set was different though. Shutan stayed with Aegis the whole set versus Akula Steve, and after going down 2-0, he turned around and demolished him, nearly 3 stalking him in game 5. He got his run back against Akula, but his tournament run ended at 3rd place, falling to Tweak and Olimar vs Diddy Kong. But what an amazing way to end Shutan's year. This run definitely secured him a top 10 spot in my eyes. Redeem your Tweak apology card here. After being seen as a player who fell off this year, with a lot of people bumping him out of their top 10s, Tweak has turned the narrative around in the 4th quarter of 2022. Committing to playing a combination of primarily Diddy, then some Wario and Sephiroth, 
Tweak has been gaining notable success again after winning Port Priority, then getting second at Main Stage to his current rival Spargo. Tweak started off with two huge wins against Meister 3-2, then Light 3-1, beating both players with Sephiroth. In winter semis, he had to play against MKLeo, who Tweak made look like a 2-2 player in a few of those games, nearly 3-stalking him in Game 1. In winner's finals, he had to fight Spargo, who's had a hold over Tweak for a while now. While Tweak was able to beat him in winner's side at main stage, Spargo has now double eliminated Tweak at the last three majors that they've played each other at. He had to fight against Shutan in losers finals, but Tweak was undefeated against Shutan coming into this event. 3 0 him when they had played in port priority, he kept that record going here, defeating him 3 1 in Diddy vs. Olimar. In grand finals, he was able to get a game off of Spargo, but ended up falling 3 1 to him, getting a respectable second place. After being ranked number 2 last season, Spargo has been pretty inactive for a majority of this season, attending mostly invitational tournaments like the Invitational, Smash Summit 5, and the Ludwig Smash Invitational. A lot of people doubted Spargo before all of these events, and he had showed up and proved the haters wrong every time. His most recent open bracket major was Main Stage 2022, which he won from the loser side. Spargo made a very dominant run through the winner's bracket of this event. He played Siski in round 1 for the first time ever, and Spargo beat him 3-1. He then had to face off against Japan's top Game & Watch player, Mia, to make top 8. He took Game 1 in Cloud vs Game & Watch, but then went on to lose the next 2. Spargo had to switch off of his Cloud to Aegis, which worked out a lot better against the Game & Watch, taking the set in a dominant Game 5. Winner semis against Akala saw two of the youngest stars in the top level of Smash in an insane set. It was a dead even matchup between the two, splitting games back and forth, where Spargo eventually was able to take the game 5. Winner's finals against Tweak saw Spargo holding a lead over Tweak, Sephiroth, and Diddy for a majority of the set, solidly closing it out 3-0. In grand finals, he dropped game 3 to Tweak, Sephiroth, but he showed a clear dominance over America's best and the rest of the world. If we're going off just December, Spargo is the best player in the world. Rankings don't work like that though, unfortunately. But his two tournament run between Main Stage and Scuff World Tour has showed what Spargo is really made of again. Thank you so much for watching. These tournament recaps take a ton of work, so I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video. My goal is to hit a thousand subscribers before the end of the year, so be sure to leave a like, comment, subscription, whatever works best for you. It all really helps me out. Here's a video of mine YouTube thinks that you'll like. Go on, check it out. Until next time, guys, I hope you have a good one.